Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Wash and Paint. And actually, today we are in Mobile, Alabama. This is a video that I have been wanting to make for quite some time. Guys, as you see in the title of the video, how to speed up your service cleaning two times the speed. Actually, sometimes it's three times the normal speed of what your service cleaner normally runs. And guys, no, it's not pre-treating the concrete with sodium hypochlorite. I know a lot of us do talk about that here on YouTube. Some people talk about it and they're just repeating something they've read before or they've heard before and they really don't know the benefits of pre-treating concrete. So we wanted to bring you this video of how to speed up your surface cleaning without spending an incredible amount of time with some rinky-dink 12-volt pump out here trying to pre-treat this vast amount of concrete. And trust me, I've done it before and it's not fun. It takes a good bit of time to pre-treat it all. And that's time someone else could be doing something else. I'm gonna duck behind one of these vehicles. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad. So again, pre-treating, you know, it's got its benefits and it's got its uh, downfalls. Again, you gotta have the sodium hypochlorite available, which, you know, it's not expensive, but it does cost a little bit of money. Um, bringing it back and forth to the job site, having enough here. And like I said, it's a giant piece of concrete. And this is not the only piece of concrete we're doing. And guys, if you already know what we're doing, drop a comment in the section below. It may be obvious to some of you out here. But what we're doing, we're speeding up our service cleaning for about 50 cents. Now, that's a little bit misleading because over the period of the day, it would cost you more than 50 cents, approximately $2, maybe $2.50, depending on how long you're going to be surface cleaning. So guys, we're all familiar with a tactic called downstreaming. We all know what that is. We've done it before. Also, I want to mention in the description of this video, there's going to be some other resources. I really strongly encourage you to go read those other resources on this technique that we're doing. There's going to be some video links in there. There's going to be a couple articles, that sort of thing. And this could really help you out in a big way. So guys, what we're doing here, we're doing something called upstreaming. As many of the old timers in the business know, upstreaming used to be a thing long ago. We kind of got away from it because we had stronger detergents, better degreasers, better surfactants, and we were able to downstream. That works pretty good on residential work. But when you were doing large commercial projects, it's really hard to come in and pre-treat all that is concrete with some rinky-dink 12-volt pump. The little pumps aren't really designed to do this type of uh, heavy-duty, constant-duty running. You burn them up. I mean, there's times we've burnt up three pumps on one job. And look, it's nobody's fault, but I, we just couldn't handle it no more. It, it was just annoying, and it got to be to a point to where it was taking more time to pre-treat something than just to go ahead and try to surface clean it. So I started thinking about how could we speed this up. So I started reading some engineering articles and stuff where these pumps can handle a certain amount of detergent ran through the pump and pressurized. That there's a lot of benefits to pressurizing detergents. It makes it work a lot better. I can't even hardly keep up with Apex. He's, I'm walking and talking. I mean, this is really a phenomenal speed. So, pressurizing that detergent and spraying it out of the pressure tip when service cleaning really magnifies the mechanical action of the water contacting the concrete. It adds, obviously, the detergent to it, a cleaning agent. It adds more viscosity to the water and just really makes it work a lot better than if it was plain water. Now, some may ask, does this work better than pre-treating? In my opinion, it does. 
I'm still doing some testing with square footage and time. So you gotta imagine if I went in and out and pre-treated 100,000 square feet of concrete, how much money would that have cost in sodium hypochlorite? The logistics of bringing it back and forth, all of that good, good stuff. And yes, it does work, but then there's a time penalty. Uh, just traveling time back and forth to the, the station to get the sodium hypochlorite. When I can do that same job with one bottle of detergent, that costs six bucks. By adding the detergent to our water stream before it goes to the pump. And that's called upstreaming. And then look, before you start leaving a bunch of comments, I, I know what I'm talking about here. You can go do some research on it. These pumps can handle some mild detergents. Now they can't handle any sodium hypochlorite. But the mild detergents being pressurized up to three or 4,000 PSI seem to be working better than if we were throwing a three or 4% sodium hypochlorite solution on it. And again, it's a one bottle. I'm gonna walk over there and show you it in a minute. I'm gonna show you how I mix it and everything. And also, if you don't have a buffer tank, again, check out the description. There'll be some links in there. Um, we have a gentleman in there talking about adding this to a regular pressure washer. But if you do have a buffer tank, you can utilize this right away. Again, I can't be responsible for any equipment damage because I don't know exactly how you're going to run your equipment, how you're going to mix the soaps. I mean, I'm going to show you that here in a second. But again, do your own research. But in most cases that I found, these pressure pumps can and will handle mild detergents in the upstream matter to pressurize it before it gets to the surface cleaner. It's being pressurized in a pump, not a downstream. So the, there's actually detergent inside the pump, inside the pistons that's pressurizing. And I know you might be a little bit hesitant to want to try it, but there again, do your own research. We have uh, talked to several people around the country through our YouTube channel. They have been trying it with phenomenal results. You know? Now I'm gonna show you exactly how I mix this stuff. Pretty simple. What soap I'm using, again, pretty simple, but it'd be good for you to see it. Also, I wanna mention, we tried this on a dumpster pad. We didn't even have to use any degreaser at all. I put a little detergent in my buffer tank, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna show you the exact amount. And it worked better than a degreaser out of a pump up sprayer, or it worked better than pre-treating it with a soft wash skid. Again, not every situation is gonna be equal. Not every situation this is gonna be applicable. But man, the speed that we are increased our surface cleaning has been tremendous. Like I said in the title, it's been two times. I'm really understating it. I could have been a little clickbaity and put four times on there. Sometimes it has been four times the speed. Other times it's been three. It's never dropped below twice the normal speed of surface cleaning. So whatever you're doing per square uh, uh, hour, however many square feet you're doing per hour, I can expect that you will come at least close to doubling that, and in some cases, more. Now this concrete has tire tracks all on it. This mild detergent that I'm putting in the buffer tank to upstream it is pulling those tire tracks up like nothing. I mean, very easy. Before, I would have had to walk around with a degreaser and a scrub brush pre-treating those tire marks. And a degreaser is 30 bucks a gallon. My time is worth whatever. Walking around with this thing on my back out here, looking like a, you know what, you know, kind of looking all dumb when we could have been doing this the whole time. I was like, a bit embarrassed about it really you know to be honest with you when i figured this out i was like i'll never go back to doing it the other way and i wouldn't even care if i had to replace my pump every couple years it is so worth it because we charge them per square foot and i mean you see what we're doing here matter of fact this machine is only on about 50 percent power because it wants to float up so imagine if I put a little weight on that and crank the apex on up to about 70 to 80%, we literally couldn't talk and walk. We'd be rolling out here. 
And again, this is called upstreaming. Now, we're about to walk over there by the machines running. I'm gonna show you the detergent I use. I'm gonna tell you how much I use in it. Also, that information will be down in the description as well. Exactly how I mix it, it's really simple. I played with this stuff for uh, weeks, trying to figure out what mixture ratio you need. Now, I will say, I have the IGX 800s. These are intelligent engines. There was a time I put too much surfactant or detergents in my bumper tank and the machine gave me a warning. I'm also gonna add that link down in the description where they explain exactly why it does it. I backed off the detergents and the machine runs fine. It does give me no warning. It has something to do about the load. Somehow the machine detects the load of the pump. Again, this is only on the IGX engines, the intelligent engines. It detects the load and somehow gives you a warning and wants to shut the engine down. Then the engine quickly cranks back up. Now, when that happened with us, all we did is dilute our mixture in our tank a little bit and the engine ran fine. But what I discovered, the amount of detergent I put in my bumper tank, the engine does fine and never gives me a warning. And we have optimal results with our surface cleaning. Again, if you don't have an intelligent engine, you probably wouldn't even have an issue with that. But just to be on the safe side, read through the literature I'll put in the description. Also, don't exceed the amount of detergents that we recommend here in a second. It's gonna surprise you how little it is. Now, I'm gonna go show you that. It's gonna be loud. So um, I may have to do a voiceover in our office, but hopefully you can hear me. So my point is to try to get this video out there and get it helping people as fast as possible. So right here, I'm a, I might can do it kind of from, from this angle. That is our detergent bottle on top of our buffer tank. And guys, it's nothing special. It's just basically a real simple detergent from Walmart or Sam's. Now, what I'm doing with this right here, I'm putting one ounce of this per 100 gallons. So my buffer tank's about a 300 gallon tank. Now it's not all quite filled up. I mean, it's literally almost nothing to do this in price. So I'm gonna demonstrate it to you just to show you. I put this in my buffer tank after the tank has water in it. That way it kind of gets mixed up. Also, I'm feeding my buffer tank with a water hose constantly. Now, what would have happened is after about an hour, you would notice less suds are coming out. And they starting to kind of degrade some of the suds now because it's being used and diluted constantly. But I'm gonna drop an ounce in it just for demonstration and then show you how quickly they start getting more suds. And it's, it's phenomenal. So again, bear with uh, me having to talk loud into the phone and the machines running, but I really felt that this was really important. All right, here we go. So obviously that's my water. This is my tur detergent. I don't even know if that was one ounce. I figured that's close. Put my top back on. Let's go check and see if they get such yet. Look, they already starting to get some more suds. It really doesn't take long because the the, um, the water hose is feeding the buffer tank. And of course this is drawing it out then it starts to um, get mixed up in there and then he's gonna start drawing some suds. Here they come. I know it took 45 seconds to start seeing the suds. Now, you may say, well, what about the time that it takes to run over there and drop a little soap in there? Sure, you're right, probably so. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably rig something up on your water hose that feeds your buffer tank. And also guys, let me mention, you don't have to have a buffer tank for this. There is a gate valve where you can upstream surfactants and detergents. 
out of a five gallon bucket if you had a four gallon per minute machine that ran directly off of a water spigot. So that link will be down in the description. So I wanna make sure you're reading that. Big Chris is getting plenty suds. I got him on probably five and a half, six gallons a minute, 24 inch surface cleaner. He's definitely walking at least twice as fast. I could power him up and he'd walk faster. We're kind of worried about our water supply drawing down though. But again, that detergent in the tank is a technique called upstreaming. It saved us a tremendous amount of time on surface cleaning because we're not pre-treating. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something else too. So I surely hope you still with the video this gets important. So it speeds up the process of not pre-treating. It speeds up the process of not having to go get the sodium hypochlorite. It speeds up the process of not having to buy these little rinky-dinky 12-volt pumps and always changing them. Imagine that cost. Imagine ordering it, waiting on it to come in, you pay shipping. It, you know, they're not expensive, but it's just annoying. You know, 100 bucks every couple weeks, 150 of whatever it is. Then the time to change the pump out. Then you're getting the bleach on your hand and all. It just gets to be annoying. Now, yes, we still gonna use sodium hypochlorite to clean buildings and shingles. But if I don't have to use it on concrete, the cost of the sodium hypochlorite by itself is worth the price of emission. The price of sitting in traffic, going to the plant to pick it up. The gas money, putting it in your truck. I mean, you're still gonna make some trips, but you can make a lot less just by using a little detergent in your buffer tank. So. I just don't want no, nobody saying, well, um, on my mind against sodium hypochlorite. Oh, God, no. We love it. It's, it's made me millions of dollars. And hopefully it'll make me mi millions more. But if I don't have to deal with the stuff, the, the less I got to deal with it, the better off. And I don't think anyone could discount that or disagree with it. So this detergent is quick and easy. You put it in the buffer tank. Like I said, we've been doing this for over three months now with zero damage to the pump. I've changed the oil once to take a look at it it didn't even need change but just to take it i put it in a glass bottle let it set overnight everything's fine it's not hurting the pumps at all again there'll be some information in the descriptions again so guys forgive the bad camera work the bad audio but we are out here in mobile alabama making money getting this done we got another big section of concrete on the other side of this building to do today and uh, we're gonna get it done. I also want to tell you real quick, almost forgot this, this improves your rinse time drastically as well. And you know, for whatever reason, those suds help pick up that stuff and float them down, heal. And our rinsing is usually far less if we're using a detergent to upstream than if we were just using a pre-treatment with a 12 volt machine. So, Guys, think about that. I hope this helps. If you have found this interesting, please leave a like. Consider subscribing. It means the world to us. And go check out my webpage, BillyDavidsonVIP.com. We'll help you how to land some of these jobs. Um, price them out. We've got sample contracts in there, commercial pressure washing, how to estimate it. So guys, anyway, I'm Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing Painting. Apex on that service planner. Big Chris on the other one. We're about to go take a break and grab a sandwich. And we hope to see y'all in the next video.